Are we ready? I think we should start for a few minutes past 7.30. Seamus, thank you for the gorgeous Christmas tree. Yeah, give me a hand. Some of you might remember Jameis um, used to do this for Thomas McConkie's Lower Lights here. Yeah, same, same way. I stole, stole Thomas's idea. Jameis is a dear friend, so I appreciate him being willing to do this. Um, it's some sacrifice of time for him. So thank you. Um, let me make sure I get all the thanks in order. So thanks to Lisa, Lisa Cannon. This is her lovely doll. Yeah, we feel very fortunate. And your roots go back to hosting mindfulness oh, stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is a good space for him. Him should come to. We get these two. I've made a Hamus. Jameis. Jameis and Hamish. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and thank you for Faith Matters uh, for hosting the Zoom, letting me use their Zoom account. Welcome. Who's familiar with Faith Matters? A few of you? Okay. Check it out online, Faith Matters. Uh, they uh, do a number of things. They do a beautiful artsy publication, um, plus some online publications. Uh, beautiful artists and writers about things that matter. Um, and then they uh, also have a podcast pretty much every week. It's a husband and wife, young husband and wife to do it, Tim and Aubrey. Chavez, and they have all kinds of speakers on, um, not just from the Latter-day Saint tradition, but all over the place. I'm not, sorry to put my back towards you guys. <laughs> sorry. Back's going to be to somebody, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I appreciate them letting me use their Zoom account. And a friend of mine, Taylor Webb, will be here, and he'll help with our Zoom audience. Thank you, Zoom audience, for being here. Let's see, I've got to make sure I've let everybody in. He is running from a meeting to here, so um, he's not here yet. He's a new professor up at the U, so he's kind of getting used to that. Um, especially appreciate, hey Mitch, for, for being here. Gladly. Grateful. Thanks for having me. Hey Mitch um, did a lovely thing at the Faith Matters Restore Gathering. Is that about a month or two ago? Yeah, October 12th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, there was a room that he set up and his his groupies, I helped him a little bit, but there's probably some of you that helped him set up this beautiful space with what kind of trees or plants were those? Uh, red banana leaf trees. Yeah. Which don't have to grow bananas, but yeah. Did you get rid of them all? Finally, are they all at your place? There's, I have some in my place. <laughs> <laughs> anyone wants one? I need a lot of sun. <laughs> But yeah, no, we got rid of, we got, we, he got rid of both. They got a dot. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. That's good. Anyway, it was a lovely place that throughout that two and a half day gathering, people could go in there and just be mindful and thoughtful. And then he did on Thursday night, he did make sure. Yeah. Well, you moved okay to that. Yeah. It was good. Um, so thank you, Hamish, for inviting um, your good people to join us here. Um, for those that you don't know, been doing this uh, Faith Again gathering, Think Again, Faith Again, for a little over 10 years, once a month. And um, we just explore, explore things that um, are interesting um, and that are topical and sometimes difficult. And you can come and just bear your hearts and souls and not feel like you're gonna be judged or censored or anything. Um, you're just welcome to be here as you are, so. You're always welcome to come to the next one. So the next one in January, I've got Matt Bowman. He's often a resource for national news media to comment on the Latter-day Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he has written a book about UFOs, which is kind of out of his you know, wheelhouse, um, except that it's not. It's, it follows uh, a couple that kind of started the whole UFA, UFO and it's called something else now. I can't even remember. Anybody know what they're called now? It's not UFOs. Anyway, this whole thing. But um, I, it, my my uh, boys and their wives are all atheists. 
And it's interesting to me how much interest they have in extraterrestrial life. And so in my mind, I'm going, so what's the difference between uh, Angel Moroni and extraterrestrial? Isn't that kind of the same idea? So we're going to kind of explore explore this, and he'll talk about his really cool book that's coming out. So that'll be fun. Um, and then there's a couple of things that Thomas McConkie is doing that I, you might be aware of already. So he came out with a book recently. He launched it at um, Restore, the Faith Matters Restore Conference, called At One Month. And again, some of you might not be familiar with, with Thomas, and some of you are. Thomas was a mentor. Yeah, um, and he launched his first book a number of years ago at one of my faith begins. Uh, just a really remarkable guy. So he's doing, he's going to be talking about his book. And it is December 8th at, let me look here. Anybody know where that is? 7.30, but where? Here. Right here. And I think it's four, Should've right? Known there's like a wait list. Ah, uh, but you probably, is it going to zoom it too? Maybe? Well, maybe. Okay. Highly recommend that. And then he's got his Burning of the Sorrows. And I don't know if any of you have done that. It's New Year's Eve thing, really cool. So actually have a fire and burn your sorrows. <laughs> so that is New Year's Eve, right? Yeah. And that'll be at the retreat center where he used to do this. Oh, that one's on Zoom. But then there's oh, that's all Zoom. So he's going back weekend. east again. Then there's that next weekend that there's a retreat, the retreat center. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm getting yeah, that conflated. So maybe, okay, thank you. Anyway, encourage you to take advantage of all, all good things. All right, so why don't we just real quickly go around the room and introduce ourselves. Maybe just throw out a word that's on your heart and mind right now, um, as you do. Lisa, why don't we start with you? Lisa, a.k.a. Zaza. Mm -hmm. uh, just happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jameis, and uh, I'm just very grateful to be here at this Christmas, uh, Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. My name is Kayla. Um, I, I don't know if the word's supposed to describe, but my day's been stressful, so I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you come to the right place. This guy is yeah, yeah, de-stressing yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Kyle, and I guess if I were to pick a word that's associated with what's on my mind lately, is just change. Ah. Kate, um, I'm just thinking about cozy Christmas. And, uh, um, I'm Holly, and I think I'm looking to love Christmas again, because as a mom of six, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Not as fun. <laughs> well, I just like working on like you know reconnecting with what I love about Christmas. That was more than one word. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm Jesse, and um, gathering is my word. I'm Tyler, and uh, my word is content. I'm Diane, and um, um, clarity. Let somebody's got it. I'm <laughs> looking. I'm Bart, and um, one thing that's been on my mind a lot lately is guests. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Bailey. The thing that's on my mind right now is finals. Finals. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm Adelaide, and my word is also content. Oh, nice. Did you say intent? Oh, I was like. My name's Doug, and uh, I think my word is connection. Thanks, Tom. Uh, we're stuck in this group, kind of in the area, and here with an open heart today. Awesome. Okay. My name is Ken, and I've been thinking about trust. I'm Lynn, and I've been thinking about gratitude. I'm Walter, and I've been thinking about uh, the least not be done. <laughs> I'm Candace, and I think of light or lights this time of year. 
Amelia and connection as well. Elise, my word is also white. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Becca, and I've been thinking about holy speculation. Mm -hmm. Uh, my name is Ridge. I got Baby Jesus on my mind. <laughs> that sounds like a song, Baby Jesus on my mind. Yeah. Can you do that? Just come out with a song. Right. <laughs> my name is Josh. I kind of came up in Provo just to experience some communion with y'all. Awesome. Thank you. My name is Sarah, and I'm job searching. So I'm thinking about your loss. So, anybody? Networking, networking. <laughs> I'm Josh, and I'm thinking about that. Oh, yeah. Tis the season, huh? My name is Hamish, and the word that pops into my head is God. And let that bring love to your heart or uh, bring discomfort to your heart. <laughs> Either way, it's on my mind. I love that. In fact, that goes with my word, love. Because mm -hmm. for me, that defines the yeah. So, thank you. Well, I'm going to turn the time over to Hamish. Hopefully you read his bio online because we don't do bios live. So go to my website if you aren't sure who this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> it's better you not know who I am. Then there's at least some mystique, like maybe this guy knows the thing or two, which I don't. Do we need to turn this a little bit? Should we turn it so he's centered in the picture? Um, he's, he's in there. I see a little bit of audience too. He's not alone. He's not alone on a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really. Hopefully, the folks on Zoom aren't sure who's been talking. Yeah. <laughs> um, before I, yeah, rather than say anything, why don't we just start with five minutes of silent contemplative meditation? Uh, if you know how to handle that invitation, great. And if you don't, great. I'll see you in five minutes. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Ring the bell. Let the fading vibrations of the Ring Gong represent you coming into quiet, intentional stillness, perhaps for the first time today or in a long while. As the mind and body try and figure out what's going on with such rest, such stillness, just bring your attention to your breath. Let the rhythm of breathing be the only thing that matters in this moment. When the mind wanders, the body screams out in discomfort. 
You can notice that and then gently return to the breath. You're struggling to get it. Feel like you're doing it wrong, or if you feel like you're doing it right, that's okay. Just let go again. Come back to the breath. Contemplative path is something like returning over and over and over again. Coming back to our essence. I invite you to reacquaint yourself with the space we find ourselves in. You might open your eyes and just sort of take in the room. Those that have gathered. Just taste the shared quality, the collective. What a lovely group. This group, as far as I know, this group has never assembled before and probably will never assemble again. So there's just something so impermanent about it. What's next? Um, what I wanna do now is just start with a song, not me singing, but all of us singing. Um, the acoustics in this place are incredible. Um, so um, I thought we'd just start with um, an acapella version of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Um, to me, it's a song of hope, um, which I learned recently on the Faith Matters podcast. That's sort of the theme of the first week of Advent, this first week of December in the Christian tradition um, is hope. Um, so if you want to pull out your phones and pull up the lyrics, or if you know them by heart, great. Um, there's a, there's a lot of verses to the songs. <laughs> it's like they don't always come in the same order. Um, that could just be me. What's that? This, let's see. I, I, I'm on a site called dailyprayer.us. That's a great question. Thank you. Yeah, so we, if that way we can all at least be on the same page. And I thought we could sing the first verse in the chorus and then the second to last verse in the chorus. Um, so that's Ransom Captive Israel is the first verse and then the um, Day Spring from on High. You can sort of see those two verses. Right. Um. Can you get a piece of paper? Yeah, where's the piece of paper? Okay, I'll go record. Sorry, is it was up to you. 
Sorry, I love this for you. Give me more time to find the song. Um, while we wait, uh, just managing some technology, but while we wait, uh, let's warm up our vocal cords. Um, just by toning a little bit. So pick whatever tone feels good to you. Um, and we'll just get some some vibration going. I've I've been learning lately like the there's there's a lot of like neurological benefits to humming and vibration in the throat. Um, and so there's some science involved here too. Um, but spiritually for me, I just feel like singing together in a group is such a wonderful experience. So yeah, just pick a tone and um let's warm up those vocal cords. Notice the vibrational connection between us as a group. The person next to you may have different political beliefs, religious beliefs, thoughts, ideas. They certainly do. And yet when we just hum together, none of that matters. Lower the jaw and do an ah. <clears throat> really give it some energy. Test the beautiful acoustics in this room. Uh, One last big effort. Uh... I don't have a great voice, so help me out here. <laughs> Let's jump in whenever you're ready. <clears throat> oh, Come thou day spring. Oh, 
Just ride this back into silence for a few minutes. Let the energy and stimulation from singing reverberate out and bring you back to your breath. Notice your body. the vehicle that brought you here tonight in this body to experience whatever it is we experience. There's no way to do this wrong. The fact that you've gathered here tonight, the fact that you're sitting here with an intention experiencing experience This is the contemplative path. You're already on it. You've always been on it underneath everything else. There's no place to get to, nothing to understand. It's simply giving yourself to this present moment, this present circumstance. A calm, quiet feeling arises, great, be with that. If discomfort or disturbing thoughts or feelings arise, great, be with that. Give yourself over to here and now.
Thank you. What I want to do now is uh, stimulate the mind a little bit more, kind of get used to this, do nothing, do something, do nothing, do something. Some of you are probably tired of hearing me talk about that. Um, in the spirit of doing something, I want you to think about what you hope for this holiday season. What's on your heart? What? Is there something that's driving your motivations, your actions? If you really dig down, it's like, you know, why are you here tonight, right? Why are you gonna go to that thing tomorrow night? Or why are you buying gifts for the people you love? Is there some sort of thread you could find? There's probably many threads, but is there some sort of thread you can point to? I'll give an example, um, and then I'll invite a few of you to share likewise. So as I just pay attention right now, what am I hoping for this holiday season? It's something like a quality of seeking love maybe, whether romantic love or friendship, um, the social gatherings that I'll be going to, that's sort of one of my main motivations, right? Looking to connect with people, to give and receive love. This is what's on my heart this season. That's step one, just being present with that. Step two is now boiling that down into a word. So in this case, my word would just simply be love. That's sort of, in a word, maybe what I'm hoping for this holiday season. And step three is to release that love to practice the trust it takes to let go of it, not try and hold on to it, thinking that if I get love, if I just control the situation enough that it'll fulfill all my desires and I'll, I'll be full of love, but instead to just put it out there, just in a sense, give it to God, give it to the universe, give it to the present moment and trust that by giving it away, all that can actually happen is that, that that's how I can receive it back more abundantly than I ever could have had it in my small, uh, selfish way. I'm curious if anyone would want to share and just take us through those three steps. What do you hope for this holiday season? What is it in a word? And then just let us share five seconds of stillness with you as you let go of it. Please, Lisa, thank you. It's a gift to go first. Thank you. I have my sisters visiting here for the first time since I, I had this place and um, my brother is here with me. And so we're, it's just the three of us. So my hope and prayer is that they feel the Savior's love and they have a desire to commune with that love and a desire to learn more of him. And for me, the one word, well, it's kind of like love, it's, it's embrace. Embrace my, my siblings, embrace the Savior's love or embrace. And then it's the letting go part, right? Yeah. Right. What do I say about that? Like how to let, how I'm going to let it go? Or, well, yeah. actually, I would just invite all of us to take a deep breath and let it out. And let's just give five seconds of silence for you to <laughs> let go of embrace. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? I want to experience the joy 
in believing in divine mystery. Mm -hmm. We'll try to not pin it down the way I did when I was younger or push it away the way I have more recently and just want to embrace the vastness and the mysteriousness of it and let that lift me up to that sort of joyful and deep part of something so much bigger than myself. Maybe a little more into the dance. Mystery. You remind me of Taylor. Taylor, so let's just take a deep breath with Taylor. And out. See if you can't feel that, that when Taylor lets go of mystery, that mystery comes back to all of us. What are we even doing here, right? We're swimming in mystery. Thank you, Taylor. Anyone else? Please. Is it Ken? Ken. 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 I, I think you know. And expanding is the word. Because when I see slowly and no longer, I'm not sure. Let's breathe it in with Ken. And out. These, these are my parents, and I wasn't about to let them in the circle. <laughs> Please join. They're my only fans, so. Well, actually, I should use that. That phrase has a new... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Anyone else want to share? Do you have a, remind me your name? Uh, Doug, that's right. Is there a word, like is the word phone? Or is there a <laughs> distraction? distraction? Let's breathe that in. Let it out. Hmm. Thanks, Doug. Love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's doing the work that's great and that that's thank you for bringing that example up doug because if you like for me anyway that's like a something i immediately go to a negative space with right like distraction it's it's my tendency to think of that as negative um and so the, the letting go piece feels good right i'm letting go of something negative but this dance we're working with is that as we let go, we realize we receive it back fully, right? And and even as we're breathing that out, like I heard the phone, someone's phone, you know, it's like so perfectly timed. Right? <laughs> and like this exercise isn't going to free us of distraction. 
right? But what it does is it brings us face to face with it. And as as uh, Thomas McConkie once said, like you, you can kiss it on the mouth, right? Like it's right there. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm feeling a special relationship to distraction right now. Like we're gonna have a lot of it over the next few weeks, especially. And maybe <laughs> you, you can't actually do this practice wrong. We can't mess up. And there it goes again, right? It's like it's always, it's always getting us. And maybe, uh, maybe we'll be able to just see it for what it is. The distraction will come. And and we'll we'll turn back to the conversation with our daughter, with our parents, with our grandparents, our sons, our brothers, sisters. Thanks for teaching us, Doug. Anyone else? We got a few. Let's go. Yeah, we'll give Doug's daughter. Remember your name, Adelaide, and then we'll come here. And yeah, um, the pure now. That is my word. And this whole season is about masking. Everything we do is so magical for that. Like the elves, they just bring them a little pay every night, but they cannot believe it. It's pure magic. <laughs> and we're getting them to because now the I don't want to call it. How can we as we get older and probably in camp or something? How can we keep the magic and not have it be so much strong get and being and have a deep focus on that on like is that on the magic of Jesus, is it the magic of togetherness and just bringing in that beauty of yeah, I guess this is the whole thing that we, yeah, I, I guess it's like letting go of trying to control what we want out of the and just letting it be magical because what already is is so beautiful and magical. I love it. Magic. <laughs> um. And it just comes back to us, right? It's all around us. How could it not be anything but magic? I'm gonna read to you. Um, I would like to be challenged. That's my word. In doing or giving something difficult for me to give, and. I have done this in the past. I haven't done this exercise. I'm really appreciating this. And I've had some pretty powerful experiences. Um, and when I have this intention, it's hard, mm. but um, it's beautiful. So I want to be challenged. That's the word. Mm. Challenged. Remind me your name. Oh, Thane. Thane. Breathe in the challenge, let it go. <laughs> Give challenge over to something so much larger than yourself. Let's see. Maybe one more. Maybe. Um, 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 holding the word and not to jump there, but the one who's feeling taken can do to you, um, partly or like. Mm -hmm. 
Fullness. it's an interesting practice right it's like with that one in particular like as i'm breathing it out i'm like uh oh there goes wholeness you know and if wholeness leaves like what am i you know <laughs> like i'm i'm only brokenness emptiness like all these things that again like my, my mental tendency is to like negate those things or be negative about them you know, which we can, you know, it's another practice, but like, as I give it away, you know, I just give it to the moment, which is what I'm already swimming in. And the wholeness I find just comes back to me as soon as I give it away. The more I give it away, the more it comes back to me. So this is an exercise in, in contemplative prayer. Um, I want to read specifically about a practice, well, an introduction to contemplative prayer, and then specifically about a practice called centering prayer, which is sort of a like a modern Christian approach to um, contemplation. Um, this is from contemplativeoutreach.org, if you're familiar with uh, Father Thomas Keating. Um, he was one of the the three Trappist monks who sort of in the seventies really brought centering prayer to, um, to our consciousness. It was, it was sort of a, a lost tradition from the early desert fathers and mothers of Christianity. And in the seventies had a resurgence and has been steadily growing ever since. So I'm just going to read a couple of things. This is an introduction to contemplative prayer and we'll compare that with centering prayer. Uh, centering prayer really is just an on-ramp into a deeper experience of contemplative prayer. So though, uh, though it has acquired other meanings and connotations in recent centuries, the word contemplation had a specific meaning for the first 16 centuries of the Christian era. St. Gregory the Great summed up this meaning at the end of the 6th century as the knowledge of God that is impregnated with love. I love that definition for contemplation. Knowledge of God that is impregnated with love. For Gregory, contemplation was both the fruit of reflecting on the word of God in scripture and a precious gift of God. He referred to contemplation as, quote, resting in God. In this resting, the mind and heart are not so much seeking God as beginning to experience what they have been seeking. This state is not the suspension of all activity, but the reduction of many acts and reflections to a single act or thought in order to sustain one's consent to God's present in action. And I would just point us back to the practice that we just did, right? It's, it's that going from seeking wholeness or magic or distraction to the experience of that thing. In this traditional understanding, contemplation or contemplative prayer is not something that can be achieved through will, but rather is God's gift. It is the opening of mind and heart, one's whole being, to God. Contemplative prayer is a process of interior transformation. It is a relationship initiated by God and leading, if one consents, to divine union. Now, I just want to read a few words about a specific practice we're going to move into centering prayer, which again is like a, it's like baby steps into contemplative prayer. Centering prayer is sort of like a three or four step process that leads to, and that blank is like contemplative prayer, right? It, like it leads into that impregnation of love. Centering prayer was developed as a response to the Vatican II invitation to revive the contemplative teachings of early Christianity and present them in updated formats. In this way, the method of centering prayer is drawn from the ancient practices of the Christian contemplative heritage, notably the traditional monastic practice of Lectio Divina, and the practices described in the anonymous 14th century classic, The Cloud of Unknowing, and the writings of Christian mystics such as John Cassian, 
Francis de Sales, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and others. Most importantly, centering prayer is based on the wisdom saying of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount when he says, when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door and pray to your father in secret, and your father who sees in secret will repay you. In the 1970s, answering the call of the Vatican II, three Trappist monks at St. Joseph's Abbey in Spencer, Massachusetts, Father William Menninger, Basil Pennington, and Thomas Keating, looked to these ancient sources to develop a simple method of silent prayer for contemporary people. The prayer came to be known as Centering Prayer in reference to Thomas Merton's description of contemplative prayer as prayer that is centered entirely on the presence of God. So that's what I want to move us into now, um, basically a, a bigger meditation than we've done yet tonight. We'll go for about 20 minutes. And this 20 minute timeline is really just a container to practice what we were just practicing as a collective. Um, the first step in centering prayer is to choose a sacred word. So that could be the word that came up for you just before as we we're going through it. Or it could be another word. Maybe you want to try Try practicing this with something else. Um, it's suggested to keep the word as short as possible. Um, common words that, sacred words that people might choose might be God, love, peace, Christ, um, light. But, but trust yourself here. Trust yourself that like whatever the word is, the sacred word that's going to really teach you something, that that'll just bubble up. So that's step one, choosing a sacred word. Um, step two is just setting up a posture. Um, I feel like the odd person out here because I'm sitting on my little Seiza bench. Um, but just finding a posture that's comfortable but alert, right? A straight spine will keep you awake. And, and a, um, to bring more Thomas McConkie wisdom, there's so much of it, but to bring another little bit into this room, I love how he talks about your spine stacking like coins. I don't know if he got that from another teacher, but, but that's really impacted my practice. You're not necessarily holding yourself up. You're just kind of stacked like a stack of coins. The gaze might be slightly downward. I prefer to close my eyes, but that's up to you. Um, you can have your hands on your lap. Palms open is a great way to practice. That's really popular in Christian contemplation. Um, there's all sorts of mudras you can work with, but we'll keep it simple tonight. So step one is your sacred word. Step two is your posture, the home to come back to. Step three, once we get into it, is just to return again and again to the sacred word. Like we were working with the breath at the start of it, let your sacred word be the thing that draws you back in, right? The mind will wander. The word might even trigger the mind and and it, but you can just write it back into itself and and you don't want to think about the word right if it's love i'm not like brainstorming love i'm trying to get to the experience of love and that's eventually after you've returned five ten a hundred a thousand times after you've returned to your word you might find that you can just let go of the word entirely and you can and that's, that's the contemplative state, right? That's, that's maybe something like what we're aiming at. Sacred word, posture, practice returning. There's a little sign on it that says toilette. <laughs> on the door. But the light you have to turn on just outside the door. It's the top little button. So if you're if at some point you your sacred word has become toilet, <laughs> that might be time to use the toilet. <laughs> um yeah, and, and on that, thank you, Jay and, and Zaza. On that note, take care of yourself, right? Of course we want to let go of distractions, but if any point you feel like you need to stand up or you need to step out or go to the bathroom. That's number one priority to take care of yourself. Okay. We'll go, we'll go for about 15 minutes.
before we jump in and try and hurry to our sacred word. Just let the rhythm of the breath take you there. Give yourself five or 10 or 15 good breaths. As soon as you're ready, just introduce your sacred word into your being. Not as a word per se, or a mental concept, thought, but as a guide. as a certain kind of experience that will take you into capital E experience. Trust yourself, trust your choice. You might already be thinking, oh, is this the right word? Is this going to take me there? Just trust it, give it a chance. Let your guide lead you, practice returning again and again and again. When focus wanders, relish the return. Let it be newfound motivation. Like the distraction gave you the gift of momentum back to your intention, back to your word. Notice that every time you return to your word, you're not returning to anything except the here and the now.
where else would we experience our sacred word except here and now? You feel stuck, confused, or frustrated. Great, that's okay. Just let go of your sacred word. Give yourself a moment and then it will come right back to you. It will guide you deeper. Again, if you feel frustrated or like you're not getting it, that's perfect. That's what's arising. Be with that. Let that awakening take you right back to your sacred word. Allow a sense of curiosity, awe, and wonder to color your sacred word. Experience every inch of that word. Not as a thought or as a word per se, but as a portal into experience itself. Notice that whatever your word is, light, love, life, if you go deep, It leads to the same place.
Keep breathing. Allow yourself to deepen. Not by effort or will. We couldn't force this if we tried. But by giving ourselves away, by emptying out, by letting go, We deepen. Thank you. Come back to yourself. Feel your body, feel your fingers and toes if you need to. <laughs> Some contemplative prayer teacher, teachers will warn against practicing this more than an hour a day because it can be intense. Um, maybe that was your experience, maybe it wasn't, but. Um, we've got about 15 minutes left and I wanna end with uh, another song, a chant. Um, between now and then, I'd love to just open up the space to discussion and uh, questions and comments, whatever might have come up for you in that experience. And we'll just sort of like fluff the room a little bit. Um, I, these these uh, con contemplation, meditation are very deconstructive by nature, right? We're sort of stripping away over and over and over again, going down to the, the essence of things. Um, I tend I tend to find that shifting gears back into reconstruction and storytelling and sharing is uh, a welcome respite from all the deconstruction. So yeah, questions or comments or insights. The free space to share.
Uh, it's, uh, this was useful. Uh, our family had a, uh, our son had a, and brother had an injury in a coma for a while. It's in this gray area. It's been now about seven months. And the whole family is all of the siblings have rallied. And, uh, but this is dominated the family now for nearly a year. And I was thinking, as you asked us to go through this process, what what was I thinking? And uh, it, it occurred to me, I'm thinking you know, of a family and what I hope it will happen this Christmas as we'll all be together and committed to this. And the word I that you guided us to choose, I settled on faith, uh, not, not necessarily religious faith, but uh, and I recently heard a quote, the hope is a beggar, but faith is, you know, it's proactive. And we are all very um, intensely involved in, in trying to help him find his hiding place and find him, help him find his way out. And um, so it, faith seems proactive. And, but also the family is sort of diffused throughout this, uh, this Christmas. And it sort of changed and deepened uh, the, the meaning of the season. And it, it was useful to kind of reduce the focus or uh, on, um, on on what, what I wanted, which was it was all single word was family and the other word the sacred word was faith. And uh, uh, so it was useful useful exercise. Um, and uh, kind of sharpen what uh, is underlying this, this season. And it also, uh, sort of you, you uh, vacillate between fear uh, or, you know, or hopelessness and, and resolve. And, uh, So it was just useful and it was it's good to be we brought to this point. So thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah. Ms. Seamus. And then Doc. Yeah, please. The exercise earlier, <clears throat> the word that I was kind of thinking of was healing my my dad passed away last year. Christmas was kind of a miserable experience for the family. And so healing was kind of a word that, that came to mind. But for this longer contemplation, the word I kept kind of coming back to was reintegration. Um, well, I think jo to paraphrase Joseph Campbell, the thought that's kind of come to my mind is that life tends to show us that uh, death, dismemberment, and disintegration will be the inevitability of all things we love. But through that, I think that coming back to reintegr reintegration is something that's just kind of entered in that space of contemplation for me. Beautiful, thank you. It's Kyle, right? Yeah, it's Kyle. thank you. Um, I the word that came to my mind was peace. Um, I feel like there's been so many things this year that have tried to like rob me of my peace, and whether it's my family or my personal life, you know, just those stressors of my life, and and then going through grief, and you know. Um, Kind of coming to terms with those hard things of life and 
this was very interesting for me because um, I don't really think about like peace so deeply like that. And I thought about it and immediately I felt like I became peace despite all of those like stressors and all those like hard things that I've gone through um, this year. And so I feel it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so powerful that you, you can um, become peace if you welcome it, <laughs> even amidst all the craziness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I feel an incredible relief as you speak that in this space. Like, I didn't realize maybe my whole life I've been trying to hang on to peace, right? Like, I want it so much that I'm trying to muscle my way into it. You know, like, if I could just tame it, then I'd have it forever. And as you speak, I'm just reminded of this practice that if I give it away, if I stop trying to control it, it comes back in such measure that distinguishing myself from peace, you know, I am peace, like you said so beautifully, like it's just, it is what I am. And that feels so good. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, maybe one more comment if it's out there or if you can write out in silence out of it. <laughs> just kind of connect to this and notice this kind of cycle that I'm struck by I mean, still constantly in a way where I was I was feeling pretty my heart was beating pretty quickly I don't know why I just, I just noticed that it was and I would try to slow it down and then I would the sacred word would encourage me to just accept that I was doing that and I would sort of almost something control of my whole body and then that would kind of expand to this sort of beautiful sense of connectedness to the people in this room. And then it would be cycle again. All of a sudden my heart would distract me and it was just kind of this almost like a breathing cycle for almost the entire time. But I I really I connected the piece of it because it wasn't just the piece in here, it was something like a sense of peace in this group. Mm -hmm. The people around me. And I found myself almost like trying to reach around the edges in a way. To get all the way around the circle to get out of it anyway. Um, just make sure to experience that. Yeah. Thank you. That reminds me again, it's just like the the distractions are so much a part of this practice, right? That it's like like as you're talking, I'm I'm imagining this like this bicycle wheel, right? That like the like it spins back into itself and that's what keeps it going. That's what perpetuates more movement and progress in this practice. That every time we get distracted, we return and it's like, like I remember in junior high, we flick the, like we do it for hours. You know, you flick the quarter and when it start to wobble, you try and flick it. <laughs> like you just, you get distracted and then you come back to it and just keep it spinning. Yeah, thanks for that wisdom. Um, I want to close with the same chant that we did at um, in the garden at Restore. This being a contemplative Christmas gathering, I feel like it, um, for me, all these qualities we've been talking about, uh, I find in the embodiment of the Christ. And this chant just evokes that energy for me. It just pulls me into those virtues. Um, the words of the chant are, leave all things that you have, come and follow me. Um, if you've never chanted before, it's essentially it's singing, you know, again, acapella style. We just repeat it. We repeat that mantra, that line. And we let that be our, our sacred words, so to speak, right? It just, it meditates us. Uh, it walks us on the contemplative path. Um, and so we'll just, with the last few minutes, we'll we'll chant that together and then we'll write it into a last um, minute or so of silence. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so so tell me again. So we're saying um Yeah. Yeah, and we go around the circle. Yeah, you know, okay. yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's great. And whatever the concept of Yes, for now. <laughs> I'm always changing the name. <laughs> anyway, um, you want to start in the world? I would love to. Yeah. Do we? Do you say we love it? I, I love it. If you're comfortable with it. Again, this group will never be gathered again. Um, light. Glory. Friendly. Trust. Love. Together. Rest. Presence. Join in whenever you feel ready. Hopefully sooner than later. Leave all the things that you have. Come and follow me. Leave all the things that you have. That 
things that you have. May we give away all that we hope for this Christmas season as a practice in recognizing that we are already it. Blessings, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. All the festivals. Life, love, and light to you all. Thanks for being here. Thank you, dear Zoom friends, for joining us. I wish you could have been here in person, but thank you. God bless you.
church history classes and a less popular world history class will be done the way more popular. Yeah, it's a kind of I don't I mostly Yeah, yeah, French I changed my name, but my, my, my new last name states me. Yeah, it's the kind of like, I don't know, the first yeah. Christian marker. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like one of my favorite things to that song. Nice. Every weekend, like Friday, I'll be done. Good night. Thank you. 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 I <laughs> 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 That's great. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, it's like I can just have Like I told you, like unsubscribe at any point. Oh, it's going to be Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I think I just like, oh, like, so like I should meditate on her. Yeah. 
She uh, ran into a guy that makes all the best on my Yeah. 
Thank you. It was one that's my new one. That's my new one. They go to his first name. They try to No. Oh, yeah. Okay, how many? Oh, yeah, we have a 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 We That's good that he's incorporated. Right. Yeah, because that guy seemed like he does not want to Thank 
Scott looks dead for Brad. And
Not yet, because we are planning the church board um, as a meeting with the city. Because I think that when like, the first that three months of us, the coppers came in, and we wanted to get it to them. So we much more hard to get it to them. So, yeah. And I think it's kind of sweet. It's like the only church in the city. So, there's... Um, thank you. They want to have their pain and they want to stay. So, we can agree on the price, which is an keep it operating similar to how we still look at the But then on Tuesday, one day later, the 11th day, we the city, but was the city. By getting that church to spend it's very natural area. Yeah, but I'm actually kind of No, that I'm actually mentioned in the way I don't want to live in it. Just friend of mine, when you bought it, a friend of mine. Is there anything else we can do to help with our change the system? Yeah, Oh, yeah. Did you see that one on my bio at the end? It said, I just moved out of my parents' place and I'm going to be in the I'm moving up in life. Yeah, I'm going to take a bed. Yeah. 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 I'm coming upstairs. You know, I've got, I've got this, this trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch yeah. the house. I'll take care of the house. Yeah. 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 Wasn't even probably doing as much as whatever some group was doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing up the beautiful thing and you got a chance. Whenever you brought that up, it was just for me. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to say this like God, you should start a conflict. I like fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The song in there, the thing that's just down, and then you have the song in the song. Yeah. And then the song for that, and then Tony, yeah. Tony, it's just. Yeah. Well, we had that guy. Danish 
It is not a confessional, I can tell you that. No, it's not a from the East Coast Club Old Church and they got this and the husband software engineer developer used this whole chapel space as his downstairs they rented out downstairs I can't remember where my dad trained it up. Yeah, I like to try to make music, a place for music, and maybe other suspense, and and then maybe. You know, maybe if I, I do want to try to be a touch like like if you wanted to be there, I used to be great to cater lunch and speaker for dinner. So then I'm like, okay, so I so the whole thing was and then I was going to lock your this up, please. Oh, because I got here later and I wanted to so I was trying to find the book. Janet moved downstairs. Well, I think it's a cool book. Thanks, so much. Hey, thank you. If you ever want to play, 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Y